Hello everyone, this is Mike Check 95 along with my two usual cohorts, Lyson Fang and Krieger Margin. Sorry. <laughs> um, yo. And we are back at it again with another Mike Check Productions Mike Check Movie Review. If you happen to enjoy this review, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Join the madness that is Mike Check Productions. Find us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Discord, all the works of those. Also, our podcast, the Mike Checked Podcast. Moving on to the review. We reviewed the newly released film directed by M. Night Shyamalan, A Knock at the Cabin. For those who um, haven't seen this film yet, like we usually review older movies, like have like maybe have like at least a year old or like a, a year to maybe 20 years plus old. But sometimes we review newer ones, so. For, for the new reviews, we will say that there is a spoiler warning for those who haven't seen it yet. So, as of right now, there is a spoiler warning. If you don't want to watch this review, you just just shut it off. And go watch another review of ours because we have a lot of great content. The synopsis of this film is, While vacationing at a remote cabin in the woods, a young girl and her parents are taken hostage by four armed strangers who demand that they make an unthinkable choice to avert the apocalypse. Confused, scared, and with limited access to the outside world, the family must decide what they believe before all is lost. Now it's time to move on to the numbers. Critics rate this film a 6.7 out of 10, while audiences rate this film a 6.4 out of 10. So, kind of numbers that set towards the middle. I think part of it may have to do with the fact that it is M. Night Shyamalan. He's a very, he's a director that people tend to either really like or really hate so he's kind of in the same category in my brain as like rob zombie but for different reasons the budget of this film is 20 million dollars yes i did a knock on rob zombie again isn't that less than what our last things uh, not things like terrifier 2 was no but the budget for uh terrifier 2 is 250,000. but as of right now since this film is still freshly new the box office had regained back 52.4 million dollars so they're making a little bit more money back from their budget so as of like a two week time span would you say that's good so far or a little bit eh i feel like it's not going to be in the red at all but i think it's definitely going to go down in history as a forgettable movie i mean I, I, probably i yeah. it's it's kind of in the danger zone but not really this isn't going to be a generational movie. That no, people are going to look. it's definitely not a sequel or film. Too. They get kind of a cult underground following. I would say that. Be just big. Yeah, it's it's definitely it's definitely looks like a film that's going to have a cult following like ten years from now. Vibe of a random Netflix movie. <laughs> vibe and a re <laughs> vibe and relaxed Netflix movie. <laughs> Do you guys believe that this film was worth the twenty bucks that we rented it for? I don't think it was worth 20 bucks to rent for it. I think it was a... If I had to rent for it, I think a fair price would have been five. Well... I would say it was 10. To buy it, it's... To buy it's $25 across the board on Amazon Prime. Bro, I rented it for 19 One of my favorite things that they did on this film, I don't know if you guys have realized this or not, they did the same thing uh, it, with the movie Old, M. Night Shyamalan did that in his last movie, but they shot this film in 35... Uh, camera only to give, give it the night and I quote 1990s classic thriller thriller look. Ah. so if you notice the difference in camera quality it's because it's using I did notice that which is pretty cool I did notice that honestly that too, yeah. 35 milliliter is very noticeable um, for me yep and that stuff's so much harder to develop and it's 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 that's some good stuff that, um, that that makes the film, I guess, kind of, I guess, a little bit more more worth to watch because of all the hard work that they put into it, with just the fact that it's a thirty five millimeter. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely an artistic it, way of doing it. Oh yeah. Also, this was based off a off a novel, it as was. well. Um, really? Yep. Uh, it came out in twenty eighteen. Uh, it's called The Cabin at the End of the World by P Paul Drimblay. So this it's not just like some random story where let's make an apocalypse movie. It's an actual book that they done it from. Um, this is M, M. Night Shyamalan's uh, second R-rated film um, after The Happening. Um, the only reason that M. Night Shyamalan was interested in Batista was his performance in Blade Runner 2049. Ah, yes. I, I, I mentioned that in the, in the reactions. If you guys happen to 
want to see those reactions, those will be in a separate video. So that was my random trivia, mm -hmm. and I think there was like a couple. Man, I think you said something about the bandit and that might. Yeah, I don't know. If, I don't know uh, if you guys really noticed it, but like I didn't. I never saw Eric take the bandages off. So. Um, whenever Eric is having his head bandage changed, whenever he's putting it on, his hands were uh, rope tied in the front, but then whenever he sits back down, it's, it's tied behind his back. So that's one error that people notice. And the other error, which this one's a nitpicky, but uh, during one of the news reports, the Scottish refers, uses the term parking lot. The term is not used in Scotland or the UK. They use a car... A carport? Car park. Oh, car, car park. car park. Oh, it kind of cut out for car a second. Park. There's no garage. Yeah, there's no garages, anything like that. It's, it's car park. Hmm. Okay. Um, so those are those are my things. Oh, yeah. also the uh, the Universal Pictures thing at the beginning. This classic one that is the one that was used from 1965 to 1973. I I figured it was around that era. Okay, so on the credits, and the credits kind of read into some. The end credits showcase images of flowers. Plane crashes, water, lightning, and fire, and at the very end of the credits, you can hear knocking on the cabin door. Yeah, that was that was I didn't mention yeah, it, but I that was the Easter one. egg. Does that play, does that suggest the... does that suggest the purgatory? It could. It's a thing. I will say. That's the thing. Yeah, it could. It could. I. It really, really, it could. Okay, so for me on this film, like I said, the twist on this film was that. There was no twist on the film. It was super, super, super straightforward. If there was um, a twist, it was obvious. Th yeah, the only yeah, from was what? The twist was the four horsemen thing. Yeah. Yeah, they did that nice, and if you guys saw, you know, the four visitors, they had red, uh, white, red, black, uh, black, and green clothes on, yeah. which represented each one of the riders of the apocalypse, and then they actually showed them order uh, that they would appear in the Book of Revelation. So that part was cool. But that was the only, and what was that, 10, 15 minutes in? And I was like, oh, wait, that's what this is. Yeah, you, you, <laughs> that, like, like, it, like I said, it's a really obvious twist if you, like, either are a religious buff or just know a lot about, like, the, the um, tribulation and everything. I think there are some missed opportunities on the personalities of some of the, uh, some of the horsemen. I feel like they should have had that reflective of, of that specific horseman. I, I'm sure malice would showed malice towards it. You know what I mean? Like they should have been more representative of that. I th I think they missed some opportunities to make it more real too. So yeah. like whenever he was like, "This is pre-recorded," I think one good thing would have been is if they would have been, if they would have like card called their parents or something, like the other one's parents. Yeah. The one that was uh, you know, the one that was doubting and that like the, and have them die on the camera. I mean, on the phone. I think that was a really really big missed opportunity also um, I, well, when you were saying like filling out like more i guess about the the horseman characters i kind of feel like out of all of the horseman characters it probably had the most dynamic most like screen time most like probably in-depth like personality was batista because he was the one leading the charge it was kind of a uh, weird it was representative of the, of the the white horse which was the strongest of all mm -hmm. the four yeah. horsemen it was so. it was weird they had um Redmond die first since since he was played by a yep. really high profile actor yep and I feel like they should have the pacing didn't feel right to, on that I, um, I would put a debate on a that but the, that's just I'll get into that in a minute Redmond like Redmond dying quickly I feel like that pacing isn't correct I don't know I just didn't I just didn't like the way that, that oriented for a good while you thought maybe gonna uh, Batista was gonna die before Leonard was going to die before the black chick. And, it was, and then I was like, wait, what if the black chick's the one? That's not very, you know, well, that's like, not very cool. The way, the way the film progressed, like, it made it, like, like you said, like, with uh, Leonard being the head of charge and everything, it was painfully obvious that he was going to be the last one to die. Those are some of my gripes for it. Um, I, I don't know. Uh, the transitions as well. We talked about the transitions between um, scenes whenever they went back to their flashbacks to get to know them a little bit more. Every time one of the apocalypse was judged, it showed them in their life to kind of choose which is, you know, more and after. And, you know, I felt like that wasn't done correctly either. Um, there's some really unnecessary uh, stuff that they covered that yeah. they could have got away with not doing. 
um, like like the intensity that that first scene had had one of the most intense and they just split to like an awkward presumably coming out to the parents kind of thing meeting the boyfriend or husband or whatever and it just didn't transition well because it was complete opposite which it might have been part to make it more for the audience yeah to kind of like um, slow them down so they're not so because it's supposed to, it's it's labeled as as a uh, suspense horror movie so it's probably their way of trying to slow them down i guess to kind of like cap it all off since we kind of did it for terrifier 2 as the film itself because we can't really compare this to any other kind of film that I can really think of it's presentation wise how it was delivered how it looked how the acting portrayed did you enjoy this film or could this be a film that you would pass on this is, this is a it's a weird in between um i if i ha, if i go back in time to a couple hours i would say hey guys i don't want to spend 20 dollars <laughs> going into it that it wasn't going to be good yeah but it's not a bad film yeah it's just like an average random netflix movie quality thing for me like uh, it's, it's better than some shitty movies i've seen before it's not i enjoy batista expanding on his character mm-hmm. he, he, i think batista as a role did a good job there um but like yeah i mean i, I don't think it was worth worth the money for me i agree with a lot of what krieger said i feel a lot of like their camera positionings and views and being used and the whole transitions i think were to kind of give you that uneasy awkward feel and stuff so i think that might have been why they did it while it was weird I feel there was a reason behind it. Overall, yeah, I kind of agree pretty much with what Krieger said for the most part. Mm-hmm. I, yeah. In the end, though, I actually, I kind of enjoyed it. Like, it was a thought-provoking in a way. When you're done and over with, you just have that, like, hmm, okay. Yeah, because right. I noticed that... You have to think. I, was, I noticed that during pretty much throughout most of the reaction vi- part of the reaction video, which is probably going to make the reaction video very short, it's just the fact that we didn't really talk that much as it got to like maybe after the first 20 minutes it could like here yeah. and there nit, like nib picks here and there but like it it got it, we got really quiet because like we like the story kept progressing and it kept pulling us it, in yeah it, it was definitely like i would say it's definitely worth a watch oh yeah it may not be your cup of tea or so to speak or whatever but it's thought provoking enough that it'll leave you with something so you would kind of you would kind of be on the same boat with him on like as the film as a whole enjoy you enjoyed it. it or like yeah and for me it. overall i think that they they had the right idea they had a good story for it i just feel like the execution wasn't there correct i don't uh, think they executed I mean, it all yeah, the way right but for me. the only thing i can say which i had mentioned in the beginning of the um reactions was that it was kind of a funny games mixed with um, Cabin in the Woods. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was better than I expected it to be in Mm -hmm. that aspect of that idea. I didn't really have that many cons going into the film, but from from the start, before we started this review, but after hearing some of your guys' thoughts, like, I didn't necessarily type them down, but they kind of got added to the list. Um, So I would have to agree with the camera angles and the jarring transitions with the flashbacks like i mean like camera angles i understand because like some of them are supposed to be off-putting they're supposed to make you feel uncomfortable and everything to kind of give that unnerving suspenseful feeling but at the same time it's like you could have done better and then like as i explained in the reaction video i wish like this is the problem that a good percent of movies have like there isn't really a real good way to transition into flashbacks from a ongoing story that's happening in present day because like without being overly too flashy or just underwhelming like there's really no good way to have good transitions to talk about the trend the flashbacks themselves i do agree that the first flashback like, it's really hard to pinpoint why that uh, Redmond's death was tied into the awkward parent meeting 
which I feel like that there should have been a closer connection with Redman and to the bar scene. But at the same time, where they showed uh, the bar scene revealing that Redman was the one that attacked him worked for the period at the time when it was talking about Andrew's, like, anger issues. Like, so, for me... for all of them with him. Yeah, some of the flashbacks for me actually, like, it worked for the narrative. Like, I mean, either it worked or if it was loosely connected somehow and you can tell there was something there. Or just didn't work at all. Like the only one that I would say is is that first flashback, but the other ones for me had some sort of connection as to what was going on. It was just transitions I fucking hated. The thing that wouldn't make sense for them to all link together there in that scene, like they link they link Redman, and then you know they're panning out. Uh, I was gonna cringe if it, it goes over the bar and Batista's hanging out at the bar, and then they go to the hospital. Cause the hospital. It's like, well, that doesn't make sense because. All different parts of the country. Yeah. Um, they so just, they just, I, I feel like the whole Redman thing is just completely unnecessary. If they're not going to connect everybody, well, it's just one little connection. Well, I think like, that was maybe to throw something out. It, I, yeah, I think that was the Redman thing was to get the one dad's backing on his. This isn't real. Yeah. They're fucking with us. Because that was the whole basis since they had that incident with redmond years years prior to the events of this film that makes andrew believe that like redmond has is a part of this cult to come back and get at them for what happened at the bar or whatever so that's the yeah, only way you can tie that to jail and shit. pretty much yeah for sending him to jail and he wants because a lot of the, a lot of the flashbacks involved like something that andrew did or something that was bothering andrew Like it was, it was, it was folk. It was making him the focal point as like he had to be the one to make the choice and everything. Um, yeah. So, other than that, like, and like, to, to one more con was the whole like giving more characters some more like in depth or like maybe change some of the um, order of how the characters died and everything. Keep Batista as the last one to die. Uh, I. I feel like with the star power, I wouldn't have Redmond die first, but there could have been some uh, planning issues because I don't know if Redmond had like another deal going on with another movie or a TV show or anything, or just that was just his legal contract deal. Was to yeah, do that. there's the M Night Shyamalan like TV series or whatever that he does. I forget the name of it. I've watched like two episodes that could have been it honestly but he's he's plays in that too so i feel it was kind of a oh hey you're, you're available all right sweet we got a spot for you and it even worked too because he's working with the same director but now i guess kind of going into the pros um i found it kind of interesting because i have never there's there's probably been films out there that have done this but i've never seen a film use the dynamic of same-sex parents for with a with a daughter because like that i feel like nowadays that's more normal that's normal for society and everything but like say like five six years ago like i feel like that usage of that dynamic would be still very touchy and just i know there's been one because i remember seeing one but don't ask me what it was yeah it's just i i I honestly really enjoyed the fact that like they used that dynamic because it's it's a fresh new idea and i always want movie directors and like movie companies to try new new ideas and i'm honestly happy that they did this the dynamic of the family for the most part some hiccups here and there and i'd say the dynamic of the antagonists the uh the four horsemen were like their um dialogue amongst each other and, and with and with the two groups i feel like it worked for the most part like there was a couple hiccups like with uh with winds acting here and there kind of seeming like oh okay she's just punching her lines in because she's a kid but overall like i feel like it blended pretty well with a couple of ingredients missing but it, it came out good enough to help with the narrative out of all of the actors in this film, granted, Redman didn't have enough time on screen, I think Batista knocked it out of the park. Because, like, he plays, he normally p- plays the big brute who's dumb, stupid, strong, and just destroys everything. 
this is a complete left field of what he normally does, just like how he mentioned his short little um, cameo in 2049. He did a fantastic job playing of a more like reserved, held back, kind of like a, you need to make this choice, trying to be like more serious, he, more like... I complain about his acting. Like, he like, was a little too monotone. I mean, he was monotone, but I think that's what he was trying to pass off because he, he, he he's yeah. trying to stay calm in a situation that's like super severe. But his acting in this film, to me, stood out the most, and I really liked it. The Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse, I liked that. And the idea of the whole apocalypse, the one thing I kind of want to know, which I, it probably was written in the, in the dialogue somewhere or in the narrative, and I probably missed it, like, did they really explain where the visions came from or who showed them and why were they chosen? Or was, uh, just, was it just left up to question? God. Yeah, because I, I think it was yes, just left up to play. question. I guess they did. The only thing they really said was that it was like they had, well, they had the visions and then they, like, read men or whatever, posted something on some forum or whatever. And yeah. And they were like, oh, oh, we're all having these. Okay. And I think the only I nod think. that to say, like, they had it from, like, a higher power was the reflection in, like, the mirror behind all four of them in the of amongst the first sacrifice and the uh the, the antagonists and everything so like again could have been left up to question it's not really a con i i do like the idea of this and everything i do like the idea of using like the revel the story of revelations and the tribulation because i that that for some reason has always like intrigued me and everything the fact that there was a previous connection with the family and the antagonists i should have just put antagonist because, like, it gave Andrew more motive to think, oh, this is not real, yada yada. Like, we've seen it's these people before. Antagonist in this film? Yeah. Well, I'm using antagonist because, like... Lightly. I'm, it's loosely I don't think turned. there's any bad guys in this, in this film. It's, it's, unless it's, you want to talk about God. It's, it's a loosely... It's, it's, a loosely, <laughs> it's, it's loosely turned, but it's Bow just... Bow down to my like, hero. Bloody like hero. Well, how about ho how about home how about home invaders? Is is home invaders better to use? Kill your husband or sacrifice your child or I'll kill everyone. <laughs> yeah, that's that's pretty much what happened here. But I like I like the fact that there was some sort of connection with uh, the family and Redmond because again, it gave it gave more um, plot to the story to gave like the make reason you for doubt. Yeah, reason reasonable doubt. Another funny comment. I would have on this film is um, that there is this is a slightly less awkward killing the killing of the sacred deer. <laughs> like I said, the whole kind of uneasiness was I think the whole vibe they wanted to put off. So I feel I think a lot of the awkward uneasy fit the whole vibe. I feel mm -hmm, yeah. They were going. That kind of goes into like my next pro saying like the stress and the tension throughout the entire movie was actually done pretty well for the most part with the suspense yeah. going on like that was nailed on the head. I am going to have to uh, disagree with you on the pacing because I feel like the pacing of this film was not great, not fantastic, but good. Like it was. I think it was awful. I just think that there's a couple aspects that are, that, and I think we can agree on the Redman thing for the biggest example of pacing that was bad. I mean, like, yeah, that, that happened. Too that, soon. That's uh, that's why I say it was it was good. It wasn't great. Like there was a couple parts here and there that I felt like they kind of rushed. Like I feel like, I feel like this film could have taken in a time span of like maybe four days, but like so so that way each day like one of them one of them would have to. Uh, pretty much sacrifice himself to release uh, one of the um, the plagues and everything. So and isn't there like a timeline in the in the Bible that I, happens over? A certain yeah, th there is the apocalypse happens over there, a certain. Time. Yeah. There is a certain timeline, so I think that that part I would say is a little rushed. But for the, I I say just for what it is, it's it's bearable. Like for for a viewer's perspective, in my opinion. I wasn't bored. I didn't feel like the film dragged. I didn't feel like the film was just or well, I didn't feel like the film was too long. I just felt like bits here and there could have like been stretched or shortened to just a teeny tiny bit. But like, 
as put together. It's 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 good. So uh, Krieger, what's your rating on this film? Six point two. Six point two. Why do you say six point two? Yep. Uh, the reasons I explained earlier for a good long while. Um, but like I said, it's it's just uh, it's not a bad film. It's not a good film. It's that weird in between. Um, and it's just it's just missing some things. Mm-hmm. I mean, for me, um, if it's a seven or above, I'm at least somewhat satisfied with the ending. Yeah. At the end of that movie, I think. Do we have enough time to do another movie? <laughs> this is not satisfying. I, that 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 that's my thought at the end of the movie was like, okay, well, I need to cleanse my palate and, and watch something else before yeah, I go to sleep. Yeah, and I noticed that like I had it, to explain at least a couple things to kind of like, I mean, you guys probably already got it, but like I felt like some explanation for some scenes may have like helped with the, with the film, but if I if that if that wasn't there, then you know, like it, you'd just be left scratching your head. Uh, Lyson, your rating? Seven point two five. Seven point two five. Yeah, not quite a two, but no, I didn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't like in between a seven. It was a hard one. It is a very. It, it, to decide. It is a very yeah, hard like film to rate. Seven point five. But I'm like, no, no. I don't feel it's a seven, but it's not a seven point five yeah. either. I would say that like a uh, Krieger, Krieger would kind of agree more with the critics with with based how his score is because like he kind of feels like that this film is missing some things, but it's not bad. But he still wishes that he had more on his plate with this film. For my rating, um, a lot of my enjoyment of this film did come from. Uh, Batista's acting and everything just because I went into this film hearing that he did a really good job in this movie and that like with for for this being kind of a different role it's it, a lot of people were surprised that he was able to pull this off besides his very very tight outfit that he had that made him look like a, a like he said a, a second grade second grade math teacher or something not quite a seven not quite, but not a not a six, like a like a flat rate six. So I would have to say like a six point eight, cause like it it's it's a very in the middle film for me. Like I do kind of agree with some of the like with the ratings the critics and audience have. Like it's very split down the middle with a lot of things. So this is definitely going to be a film that is going to have a huge cult following in the future. I say, but for probably a very select uh, few of audiences. I don't think this would be a film that I would go out of my way and watch again, though. But, say, but I would, if, if I'm at a friend's house and they already have it playing or they're going to watch it, I'm not gonna be mad. Like, it's just gonna be like, oh, cool, get to watch it. Friend's house, and let's say you can't find anything to watch on that word. Should yeah. we watch? Be a movie bring up and say hey you gotta see yeah like i mean it's 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 not a film that you would necessarily would want to turn away if it's offered but in your own personal time there's other films you can find that are better than this this is not one that i'd be like hey let's we need to watch this like this is gonna be something that's gonna i mean before going into this i would probably before we actually reviewed this i was actually kind of going into saying hey we should watch this but that's only because it was a film that came out this year because I've been wanting to focus more on trying to watch newer movies instead of the older ones. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Join the madness that is Mike Check Productions. Social media across the board. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Discord. There's also our podcast on Spotify, the Mike Check Podcast. And any other content that we decide to bring up in the future. There's also going to be a new branch on the Mike Check Productions channel with the newly added... Uh, addition to the production crew from Lyson Fang. He is going to be start. He's going to hopefully start sharing some of his poetry work with some cryptic like videos on the channel. So if you guys would like to hear or see some of that visually or audibly, be sure to check that out when it drops from here and there. He also might be doing some other uh, videos of some of his other artistic work. So that hopefully you guys enjoy that and hopefully. Also. Also, also, my computer desk is ordered, so uh, within a matter of 
days, hopefully, um, I should be back and running and up in a good situation to continue with some more gameplay. Yes, and Krieger Marjorie will be able to cover some gameplay that I'm pro- that I happen to miss from time to time. If since I'm going to be uh, on an MIA for a numbered period of time, about ten weeks or less from now. This is my check ninety five with Lassen <laughs> Fang and Krieger Margin One. Hey yo, and we are goodbye. And we are officially leaving the cabin in the woods.